The Ansible Automation Platform MCP server is now available as a technology preview in Ansible Automation Platform 2.6. The AAP MCP server acts as a secure bridge between tools like Claude, Cursor, Chap, GPT, and your existing Ansible Automation Platform environment. You can now manage jobs, inventory, and automation workflows simply by talking to an AI client without bypassing security or governance. Here are five cool use cases with MCP and Ansible Automation Platform. For these demos, I'll be using Cursor. Cursor is an AI assistant integrated development environment for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. All right, for demo number one, I'm going to deploy an application onto a Linux server. If I log into my Ansible Automation Platform instance, I can actually go in here and search for deploy, and I'll actually see that I've already created a job template called deploy application. If I launch this deploy application, you can see that there's pre-selected uh, applications to choose from that are set up in the survey. Obviously, this is configurable. I've already set this up, and I can choose what particular server I want this application installed on. And we know this job template is a good job template. It can actually execute. And you'll see that it's going to install it. The application might already be installed, but Ansible is stateful, so it can actually look in there and say the application BIM was already installed. Now, more interestingly, with Cursor, I'm logged into Cursor, and as you can see, this is an IDE, although I don't actually have the... Um, the, the file windows open like you could have all your files and everything there i just have that hidden because we're just using the agentic chat interface here and it's an agent mode and i have some tools already installed and authenticated and you can actually hook this up i'll make a separate video for configuring this and i'm going to go ahead and we're going to make a um a new chat right here we're going to say i want to install vim on my um server if i can type and put that particular server and then put using AAP because you could have multiple MCP servers installed for different IT infrastructure endpoints depending on what you have set up there. Now, it's really cool is I've already put some in the allow list which are commands that we allow that particular agent to run. Different MCP clients are going to act different. This is just an example using cursor. Obviously, Claude will be different and other applications out there will be different. Um, now, what's really cool is it's already looked at that particular job template, saw those two surveys, the host and the application keys that it can fill out, and then it's going to run that job. And we can actually flip back into here, and we can actually see that it ran that application. You can see I've run it a few times as I'm running through here testing. So it actually dynamically figured out what job template to run. It's, it ran the job. Um, obviously, I've already put that into an allow list to allow it. And then it actually gave us some feedback on that job um, and what changed. So now we can interact with this in an, an a, uh, agentic approach. And the agentic approach here is you're seeing it run multiple commands to get awareness of that particular environment using the MCP server, which then calls the API in Ansible Automation Platform. So this allows users within your organization to use pre-existing job templates and these job templates are already pre-approved to run certain commands. You can see I didn't tell it to install some application that's not already pre-approved in that survey. So that was a cool option for us. For demo two, I want to do some basic troubleshooting. So I'm going to click in jobs, and I'm going to scroll down and look for some interesting job that has failed. And specifically, I was doing some testing earlier, and there's one that took me a minute to troubleshoot. So this one, uh, we're going to grab 1633 as a job that ran. I'm going to flip back to cursor. I'm going to say, hey, in this new chat, hey, I need help troubleshooting to figure out what happened and why it failed for my AP job, 1633, and gave it the name. So what it's going to do, again, is going to run some tools. It's going to do some basic thinking where the LLM is doing thinking, and specifically this particular one is running Claude 4 or 5 Sonnet. And it's going to run a bunch of commands here. So it's running some AP jobs to look at the failure. And it's see, hey, I can look what happened with your job. And this job, it failed. It was trying to reach this endpoint. And it couldn't talk to this particular endpoint because my token was, um, out, was bad. So it's really nice is the token is apparently expired that it logged into. And it only gets access to the jobs and things. So it's not getting access to credentials and things that it shouldn't have access to. It's whatever token you gave the MCP server. But this is nice because now you can troubleshoot particular job templates. Anything that it would look through hundreds of tasks, it can do really quickly for you. And it's like having like a buddy helping you troubleshoot these playbooks really quickly and effectively. For demo three, I want to talk about inventory query and management. 
I'm going to flip over back to the web UI and we're actually like going into the inventory section here and you'll see that I have a bunch of different inventories. There is, uh, you can actually see at the bottom, there's 14 inventories and I can sort through them and figure out like how many hosts are in each inventory. But with a lot of different people using the same AP instance, it's nice to have this ability to use an LLM to query through MCP to figure out information about that inventory. So I can ask it the same kind of questions in a conversational tone and be like, how many inventories are there? Which inventory is the largest? And it's gonna actually, again, use MCP. This time it's using the AP management server in here instead of the AP job server. There's different tools. And here you can actually see that it's already queried, figured out that the inventories, it actually uh, made a, a list is there's 220 in this, the next one's network three, the next one's rel nodes with two, and the next one's this windows one with two. So these kind of are tied, but it also knows the amount of groups and we can actually query this for more information. We can actually even use this to configure it if we actually turned on uh, configuration. But right now it's just retrieving this information and allows us to know what's going on with those different inventories. So this is just an easy way, again, to use AI to assist you do things faster. For demo four, I wanna talk about role specific tool sets and RBAC. So the first thing we can do is we can actually go into our MCP settings and we'll see that there's multiple MCP servers in there. It's not just one MCP server. And these MCP servers allow access to different tools within my organization. So if you looked at previous demos, you actually see I didn't have some enabled because I didn't need them. I didn't need access to them, which I kind of just need access to what I needed to to demo, right? So if I actually turn off one of these and I say, list all job templates in AP, it's not gonna have access anymore because I've disabled those jobs. It's actually gonna say, I don't see any tools related to that job, no resources found, I'm gonna stop. Um, so I don't have access anymore to that. Now, even within an MCP tool, I can actually enable and disable specific tools. So it gets really granular. So this is really helpful if you want to only allow certain tools access to certain users within the environment. And this is all configured with my MCP configuration. Now, the other cool thing we can do is I've been showing everything as an admin user that has full access to Ansible Automation Platform. Is I actually can log out. I'm gonna log back in with a dummy user I've created, no privilege. And this user only has access to one job template. Now, if I go back to cursor, I've already switched the tokens to that user. And everything, all his permissions are going to match what that user has in their RBAC settings within Ansible Automation Platform. So I'm gonna list the jobs back and I'm gonna say, can you list me all Ansible Automation Platform jobs? Uh, jo we'll do job templates rather than the running jobs. Now, what it's gonna do is it's gonna list those jobs, but it only has access to that demo job template now. See, it only has demo job template and it only has two job runs of that job template. So it doesn't have access to everything else. So we're also able to give MCP configuration to different users, even if they don't have the same permissions. It's just gonna match whatever permissions they have. So they don't need root access, they don't need admin access to everything to be able to take advantage of MCP. All right, for the last and final demo, demo five, I wanna talk about automated compliance reporting. We're kind of combining multiple demos that we've done previously into something that may be more self-service for different teams. So in this case, I've gone ahead and I've created an open SCAP uh, compliance report. So this is a really cool demo that we do. This is actually released as part of our APD project or the Ansible product demo. So this is something that anyone can actually run. But now that I put it in here, we have full access to this within our uh, AI environment because it's part of MCP. So I've enabled one MCP server AP job and I'm going to say, hey, can you run an open SCAP report on RHEL01? And then we're gonna put the exact server that I have set up with keys that I know will work, uh, nostromo.demo.reddit.com. Now, What's really cool is this is smart enough with these tools enabled that it can find that particular server, it can find that job template, it can fill out that survey for that job template and then run that report on that particular server and then build us a report. And you don't even need to understand how it works 
for to take advantage of this. So you can imagine that a security ops person doesn't even have access to AP. You've just given him a token for him to be able to run some particular tools. In this case, I have all the tools enabled, but you could restrict them to a particular tool and a particular job template, just like I showed in the previous demo four with how I specifically give a token for certain jobs. Now it's gonna run this job. It's actually already ran the right job and it's waiting for it to finish. And what's even more cool is it has the history of previous jobs, so it knows that it takes around 30 seconds. You saw like by, it's like, hey, this job usually takes about this long. So it knows how long it's about to, it's gonna take. It said execution time is 30.7 seconds. It ran on this host, it was successful. The job executed was this job template, and then it actually gives you an overview of what happened with that job template because it can see the output. And then it created a website for us. So here's the website, a refresh, and we can actually see that this is a secure configuration of RHEL 9. So we can actually log into that server and we would see all these same characteristics. And I know, for, for example, that my IP address is this, so I know it ran on the right server. It was .232, and it was RHEL 1, nostromo.demo.redhat.com. Um, and we can actually see that in here is that this system didn't follow 74 rules, so that was bad. And this is something you could use AI to analyze, or you could have AI kick off another job template to actually patch this. So this server is maintained by my colleague Nuno Martin, so we're gonna have to uh, send him a report. We gotta add an MCP server for uh, Slack or something else so we can have AI harass him. But this is a really cool demo because it's showing that we can kick off jobs, we can troubleshoot those jobs, we can create reports, and we can interact with the system without even interacting with AAP directly. It's taking care of figuring out what tools are relevant. We're excited to see what you can build with this technology. Check it out, try it in your environment, and let us know what you think. There are three links on this page. There's one link for how to deploy MCP server on RHEL. On the top left, there's one for how to deploy this on OpenShift as an operator. And then on the bottom is our GitHub link. And this is where you can open issues, feature requests, or just have a discussion with the developers, the product manager, and myself and the other technical marketing team. Have a good one and happy automating.